All right. So this week on Three Sides of the Coin, I'm doing the intro, but I wasn't even on the episode, but it's okay because it doesn't matter because it's all about me. Anyway, um, this week we're joined by uh, Crocus frontman Mark Sorace. How about that? It's not Sorace, something you put on stuff. <laughs> you, yeah, you, it's <laughs> st- star- Starace. <laughs> Wait a minute. Not Sorace. <laughs> it's so Sorace. This. this is gold. Yeah, this is this is like that episode of Mary Tyler Moore where they bet Ted that he couldn't say the guy's name right. Sorachi. Oh my god, I am so sorry. Yeah, I'm at least so I sorry. think she's at a Japanese Chinese restaurant or whatever. <laughs> give, me some, give me some more <laughs> some more of that Sorachi. I am so Ma- sorry. Ma- Mark Sorachi, great lead singer of Crocus. Sirachi. Very I spicy. So, I am so sorry. I no offense, Mark. I I apologize for totally butchering your name. All right, let's try that again. Mark Storace. There S-T- you go. Yeah. See, I had, to put, girl. Yeah, I had to put the T in there. Storace. That's exactly. Put the T in Sirachi. <laughs> you got <laughs> God help us. Your mind is mush today, isn't I it? I am. You know what? It's just, it's been crazy. It's been a- crazy. After, after that cameo we did, you've just lost all focus. I, completely, 100%. So anyway, uh, I, I like Crocus. Like I said, I danced to Midnight Maniac in the eighth grade. Baton routine. Boom. So please listen and enjoy. And Mark doesn't go too fanboy, right? No. No. Okay. Just this much. Not like he did with Gil. This much fanboy. This is Three Sides of the Coin. Talking all things Kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to... Three sides of the coin. Every month, more than 50,000 musicians, industry professionals, and rock, hard rock, heavy metal, and KISS fans from around the world listen and engage with the Three Sides of the Coin podcast. If you have a new release or a product or service and would like to reach this audience, get in touch with Michael to discuss sponsorship opportunities. Visit threesidesofthecoin.com. Hey, Cameo. It's three sides of the coin, and we're here, and you can hire us to say something on video for you. But but before everybody like rolls their eyes and goes, what the hell am I hiring three sides for? We are donating 100% of the money we raise to charity, okay? So think about that when you want us to say something. We can do a birthday shout-out, an anniversary shout-out. Lisa can do like a Paul Stanley rap. Couldn't you, Lisa? Would you do that, please? I can sing Read My Body. I can do a Paul Stanley rap. Anything that you want to do, I'll do. Mark, well, not everything. Would, would, would you get up and go open something? No, but I'll say something funny. <laughs> I'll read a comment. <laughs> yeah, Tommy will. Re- you can send Tommy a comment and he'll read it. Now, seriously, you guys all know what Cameo is all about. We'll do a video shout out for any occasion saying anything you want. You know, I don't know if we've even got any limits. You could you could have us say something like three sides of the coin sucks and we'll do mm-hmm. that. Like I mean, us, we're, we're really easy here. So head over to cameo.com. Look for three sides of the coin. The four of us will get together and record a video message for you donating all of our money to charity. Mm-hmm. Love is Blind, the song that KISS dared to hide away for over 40 years, will finally be released by Shameless, featuring KISS legend Bruce Kulick on lead guitars. Available May 6, 2022, on YouTube and all digital platforms. Vinyl, CD, and cassette available on May 20th. For more information, please visit shamelessrock.com. Everybody, welcome back to another episode of Three Sides of the Coin. I promise you this week, if you can keep up with the guests who are on this show during this episode, you deserve some prize because Lisa's here for the start of the show, not here for the interview of the show. Mark's not here for the start of the show, but he's here for the interview and the end of the show. Mike and Tommy are the only ones that are all always here. Right. Whatever. Whatever. Um, so I don't even know where to start. We just, we just recorded a bunch of cameos and, you know, first of all, thank you to everybody. This is, we've, we've probably done 
15, 18 cameos by now. It yeah, means so much that you guys are booking these and, and donating money to the Wounded Warrior Project. Um, but we, we love just, doing them because we fun. just did the most hilarious cameo. Um, you should probably post that one. If he I, 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 I will, I will ask Tim if he wants that yeah. public or private. Um, right. If he wants it public, we've got to post this. Because oh my God, Lisa just, Lisa just, she educated herself on what an upper decker is. is. <laughs> Don't make me laugh again. What happened to Mark, by the way? What, he took a he business. Took a he took a call. business phone call. He's he'll be back. So yeah, his Adam and Eve order is probably <gasps> yeah. Again. I, I swear to God. I mean, Lisa had no idea what an upper decker no. was. Live as we're recording it, she Googled it, and her response to learning what this was 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 better than the hummingbird episode. Yes, oh, it was it was better myself. than her falling off her chair. Oh my God, I've never that was laughed. Pretty so funny. Much. It's better than her kids flushing the toilet above her head. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was just so a... many, Lisa. I know. I know. I'm just I'm like the comic relief. You are. You know? That was a good relief we had there. I try. I try. You know, um, Tommy, do you have any comments you want to read from? Yeah, actually, week? there's so many great ones. I don't really know which ones to read. So I'm just going to pick a few. Um, the first one I wanted to mention, because I, I like the attitude with this. Um, Joe Pentasanti said, I will always prefer the original lineup. That being said, I went to the Hartford show with my adult kids and girlfriend, and it was my daughter's boyfriend's first kiss show ever. Everyone had fun and watching his face was priceless. He's hooked. My older sister went, it was her first kiss show. She was crying. She said the memories of me at seven with the destroyer album all flooded back. And it was, the most bombastic stage show Kiss has ever done. If you go, go have fun because it's fun. I love that. I love that word bombastic. Yeah, but just the fact that, you know, it's okay to be an original only. If that's your favorite, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can also step back and go, okay, we can still go and have fun. And have a good time. Yeah, this was all positive stuff, you know. Um. it okay uh jamie tan kiss today our kiss today you either accept it or you don't listen or you don't everyone has their opinion of what lineup you would prefer and that's fine i just don't understand when there's or the, when there are those that try to convince you to think as they do and that you were wrong Seriously, it just, oh, excuse me. Seriously, it's just one's opinion. That's all. I still have my Mego dolls. Crazy Nights is my favorite album. Oh, God. And Sonic Boom playing in the car. Kiss to me is kiss. Enough said. Great show. Sorry, Jamie, I botched your your uh, post, but, uh, you know. So, yeah, I mean, there's just a bunch of great comments today. And this is from uh, episode 490 or no, 479, where we report about the KISS shows that Mark and I went to last week. So go to uh, YouTube and uh, read those comments. Um, Before we get into anything else, um, I just wanted to do a quick mention of Alex and his band Shameless. Yeah. Which a few weeks ago we debuted the video for love is blind the album's out now the album came out on may 20th so uh you guys need to head over to shamelessrock.com you can get cds you can get vinyl you can get cassettes or you can find the shameless album on all digital platforms that are out there right now as well um bruce plays guitar on love is blind which if you haven't been following along, Love is Blind is a Gene Simmons demo that was never recorded. Yeah. So 40 years later, Alex and Shameless, with Bruce Kulick's help, recorded Love is Blind and released it on an album. And I think this is the strongest material that Shameless has ever released. And I'm not saying that to pitch for Alex. 
I just really like the singer that they have, who's also in his wife Anna's band, Blue Ruin. I, I, there's just something really cool about the sound of the of the record and the voice. It just, I don't know, it works for me. So check it out. Yeah, yeah. Thumbs up to Alex. Let's show him some love and support. Plus, he's a hell of a guy. Funny, funny, yep. funny. Dude. Yep. Um. All right. So Excuse anything me. else? Is there any other news in the Kiss world? I mean, we get accused of ignoring Kiss news. I don't think there's anything else happening. Um, not that I'm aware of. Oh, they're Euro the European tour starts. Oh yeah. Oh. So yeah, looking tour forward coming to. Up. Uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, seeing some, you know video and photos from that when it starts they're gonna be gone for what eight weeks i think i think they're coming back uh end of july well and hopefully the weather is good for them because um they were at welcome to rockville uh last friday and they they performed and everything was fine the first day but it sounds like second and third day yeah got really bad with pretty the much most bands and, weren't performing yeah guns and roses corn a bunch of bands had to literally pull the plug and there's actually people that are pissed off about it and they're like well it says rain or shine on the ticket it's like well yeah but it doesn't say death to everyone yeah it, does, it, yeah, it, it doesn't, doesn't say, say thun tornadoes and lightning yeah yeah, yeah. and you know what I mean, uh, in daytona it is that's scary stuff there like you yeah. don't want to play around with you don't want to play around with weather in daytona it gets really nasty well and remember the cheap trick um mm -hmm. thing that fell over the stage i mean it, it's just look i love concerts i love festivals i understand if you went and you're pissed because you couldn't see everyone but there's always next year at least you're alive because shit happens you know and you can't put people at, at risk like that hey tommy aren't you glad we didn't go <laughs> yeah i really am we were talking about it for a while but yeah uh, i'm really glad that we we went to milwaukee uh, yes. instead um because and of that. and and we've got the creatures of the night box set that's coming up it hasn't been like quote officially announced or pre-order but that's the next box set look at mark you want, to, you, want, you want me to you want me to get a uh, want me to get the you know they always say that gene and paul are our bosses why did my boss talk about it when we were sworn to secrecy once the boss <laughs> talks about it we can all that's talk a true story you know? i know when, when we work on these sorts of projects you know that's the whole thing you know um keep quiet don't tell anybody don't talk about it you know keep you keep us insulated and uh well, gene's always you know, gene's always been the one for decades who spills the beans before mm -hmm. you should I, I literally, I literally had stuff since, you know, around Christmas, a little laughter. And it's funny. I remember one time when we were doing three sides and I had all this creature stuff right before Mike hit record. I'm like, oh, fuck. Because I just thought people, because I said that I was working on a KISS project and everything in front of me was creatures. And I got it all out of the way. <laughs> before uh before michael hit but the record. nice thing though is the anticipation still is there because oh yeah no one knows what's on this thing yep you know i i and, agree and the, the next off the soundboard should be coming in june that's donnington with the original four from the reunion tour that could be very cool we're getting a getting a reunion tour live album finally I wish they would just do some artwork with it. I get why they're doing what they're doing, but you see these these bootlegs that have this just phenomenal artwork, and it would just be so cool if they did something special with some of these releases and gave you photos from the show or, you know, I don't know, just something extra. I would guess part of it is, I mean, beyond the reason they give for wanting to do it, but it takes less lead time when you don't have to do all of that fancy right. it, packaging and, it's, it's, and printing yeah. and layout and design when all they got to do is change a show date on a template and yeah. boom, it's done. And I understand why. I mean, I'm grateful that they're putting it out at all, but just saying it would be nice to have some of the extras, but then again, with the creatures box set, it'll probably be very much like the destroyer. So when they do those, then you get all of those extras and you get the booklet and you get all those 
things that you wouldn't normally get. So yep. Yep. it all works itself out. Um, I don't think there's anything else kiss wise that's worth mentioning. Mm -mm. So this week we got up early and our guests stayed up late to make this happen. Yeah, it sounds like one of old Paul's old stage raps exactly. about the people about the people who are in the front row. Oh our guest. How many was, animals do we have? Our guest was in Switzerland, which when we started was like eight means. or eight or nine o'clock at night for him. Um, Mark, do you want to kind of give a little pre tease here of who? Because you didn't go total fanboy, but you're a huge fan. I am. Um, let's say when Mike told me that this guest was going to be on, I was like screaming in the night, um, you know, and then I stayed awake all night, uh, I, you know, after that. And, and then and, your uh, big stick went boom. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Finding out that he was going. Is that is that enough for you guys? Is that enough for you guys? No. Uh, and by the way, I used to think his name was. Storage. Storis. But Storage. Was, I, because that's the way phonically it looks. S T O R. We, we we got the official pr pronunciation right from him, and it's completely different. I would have never. Picked well, that. Nico, Nico would have got this right. Nico would have nailed it. But Nico's because, smarter than all of us. Yes, but my paisan brethren would have gotten it because it's Storace. Storace, Mark Storace, from Crocus. And now he's got his own solo effort called Storace. And let, let, let me just say, he lets us know how old he is. And you'll see that. And when he says how old he is, and the spirit and the love of music that this man has is just amazing. He looks great for his age. Uh, I, I tell you what, um, the last few records, um, which really, I don't even know if they were released here by a label, but the, the last couple of Crocus records, really a, a great return to form. Um, it's funny too, because I kind of, they kind of went off my radar for a while. And then a friend of mine said, Hey, these are, you know, they're still releasing stuff. And he, you know, he, he just sent me some sampler stuff. I'm like, Oh my God. I'm like, you know, and it's funny too, because I'm still a brick and mortar guy and I, it, that's one of the, the releases I look for, but I can never find. I guess I should probably just break down and go to Amazon and uh, get some of the last uh, last couple of records because they're really good. Um, you know, it's funny. One of the cool things I thought about him, too, is he really took all that in stride. I, I, I a little fanboy here, you know, much like I did with Gilmore, you know, I didn't like when the bands were trying to write. It was obvious they were trying to. They were trying to go music. more commercial. Yeah, I, I, I always thought things should happen naturally. And when you have somebody, you know, changing your look and changing your sound, I mean, Mark totally owned up to it. He's like, yeah, we had to make things less heavy. We had to look this way. It ruined them. I mean, for me, it really did. I, I, they went off my radar. And then when they came back with Heart Attack, matter of fact, I brought that album a couple times. If you've never heard Crocus's Heart Attack record, you really should. Uh, I want to say that came out in like 88, 89. I'm guessing I'm just going off the top of my head. But it's really a great return to form for them. Unfortunately, um, you know, just like the last Triumph album, it was just a little too little too late, unfortunately. You know, they never, never, you know, got their footing again. But the music was there, you know. Um, but uh, what a great guest. Um his attitude is a 10 out of 10. What a great guy. Um, you know, also has some kind of cool things to talk about when they toured with Kiss and in, uh, in, uh, there's, some, there's some good canu ki canusha. There's some good <laughs> Kiss minutia. I invented a new word. You made another word. Kiss Nusha. Kanusha. Kiss Nusha. Um, yeah, no, this is a fun interview. Mark is, is full of stories, crocus stories stories touring with kiss you're gonna enjoy it i did mm -hmm. i love speaking with them so let it roll and we'll see you at the end do you have something to say leave a voicemail 
or send us a text message. Call 320-515-4771. Hey, Three Sides fans. Very, very happy and uh, proud to have on Mark Storacci from Crocus. And now, I guess, uh, Mark, tell us about your new project. It's uh, just your namesake, correct? Well, yeah, um, that's how you spell my name. <laughs> and if you can't read it without glasses, then it's up here behind me. <laughs> and the album's called uh, Live and Let Live. You know, it's uh, yeah, very, very close to my heart, this philosophy. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to say uh, that I finally came around to doing my first my first solo album at the age of 70. <laughs> oh, my God. And, uh, well, you know, it, it was on my bucket list. And uh, so that's done. <laughs> Mark, Mark, and, Mark uh, let, me, let, me ask, let me ask you, how did you approach doing a solo album differently than doing, like, a Crocus album? Um... Well, I, I had more freedom, more elbow room and worked um, with whoever I want to work, wanted to work, who was on the team. I didn't start off with a team. I started off um, with looking into my drawer and looking into my archives and old demos and sorting out a bunch of old songs and lyrics and stuff which I wanted to work on. But I needed co-songwriters, uh, e.g. guitar players, with whom I could expand. And uh, I don't play much guitar myself. So I wanted to have, you know, higher, higher level musicians working with me than the six chords that I know, you know, <laughs> and that that's how I started. So hey, I gotta, go, oh, go ahead, Mark. I was going to say, uh, you know, being that this is a kiss podcast and uh, this is, this is one of those things that happened to me in life that I've always wanted to ask somebody, well, from the band about this is the first time that I'd ever heard of Crocus was on the radio here in Detroit and it was 1980, and I just assumed that Metal Rendezvous was the first record. But I'll never forget the very first time uh, the DJ called Crocus the Swiss Kiss. Have you ever heard that before? Because the one DJ on the local radio station used to play Heatstroke a lot. And I remember he tended to play it at night, and I, I purposefully waited for like for like a good couple of weeks he, he played it around seven it's funny i still remember this it was around seven o'clock at night and i loved the song so much never heard of the band and of course at that time kiss wasn't playing in 1980 they were doing like unmasked but had you ever heard of your band being referred to as the swiss kiss not really first time i'm hearing that but uh i i can probably see where it's coming from uh Crocus is also pretty basic, if you like. You know, it's a five piece and uh, no keyboards. And, you know, um, and uh, Paul has a high voice and so do I. And, you know, there's a slight, um, it's, it's not over complicated music. Um, well, I always thought it was more of a, you guys had more of an ACDC vibe or, uh, you know, or a, a rose tattoo. I mean, all that stuff yeah. right mm -hmm. around that time, I, you know, I, and I, again, I just was, I gravitated towards it and, uh, you know, that song, and that was another thing too, because I thought that was your first record, you know, um, I was, was Metal Ronnie with the first one released here in the States? Uh, yeah, it was. We signed to uh, we were signed to Ariola in uh, Europe, and then through Metal Rendezvous, we were discovered by Mike Bone in New York. He was A and R for um, Clive Davis of Arista, and uh, then they signed us up. And Heat Strokes was the song that that uh, 
that you know got Mike Bohm interested in Crocus and uh, and it's it's a great song with a, with a guitar dual duet yeah. you know and twining guitars and stuff and um, but metal metal rendezvous was not the first Crocus release uh, that was my debut album with Crocus actually and uh, it was the one that just took off like a re- a rocket in, uh, into the charts all over Europe and even rang a bell in the USA you know which is which is great now now as, I as, thought as, that, but go ahead Mike. I was going to say so as Mark mentioned you know it, his DJ there in Detroit referred to you as the Swiss kiss yeah. but you eventually not just a few few years later from 1980 you were opening for kiss on the animalized tour yeah yeah uh huh, and uh, yeah, that was uh, right uh, during we were on the on the Blitz tour, mm-hmm. you yep. know, and uh, it was it was great, you know. With uh, they told us you got you guys can open for Kiss. Oh yeah, okay, great, let's go for it. And uh, we got we got to meet the band every day, you know, and hang out and and stuff. And I used to discuss with Paul uh, about what he does and what I do uh, to get the slime. You know, I I call them frogs, (laughs) you know, the the, uh, hangout, this this stuff. Qatar, I guess, is the medical uh, (laughs) word for it. And uh, yeah, then that's the first time I heard anybody telling me, well, I, I take a soda, you know, whether it's whatever or whatever, we're not doing any ads here, and uh, just gargle with it. And I thought, wow, okay, that's... That that's what cool. Paul Paul told you, that's what he does, he just gargles with soda. Yeah, with so yeah, yeah. And uh, and I, and that, my thing was um, make a hot tea and um, put lemon in it you know and uh, the lemon just uh, eats away the fat and and grime and and gets rid of it and then maybe a sip of soda on top of that you know and and that was it <laughs> but uh, you know there's many roads lead lead to Rome as they say so it was nice and um, we had coffee with them a couple of times and they turned up in business suits in the morning and thought, oh, okay. <laughs> How rock and roll. They yeah. Started, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I never even owned one, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. And yeah, there was this, this tragedy that happened once that, but nobody got hurt. Hope, you know, thankfully that we, during a show, one of the, the lighting trusses got loose or something and it just swung down, you know, it just swung down and and just it, it, like a pendulum, you know. And we were like, holy moly, that was close, you know. And, Scary. Uh, because we had experienced worse things before, you know, where uh, a guy, from, a lighting guy got killed, you know, but... That was, that's another story, and uh, we were pretty depressed after that. Um, yeah, um, what else? Ah, one, <laughs> one <laughs> night to, during that uh, tour, our tour manager, LD, Little Dave, he's as big as a house, so he said, let's go see a Michael Jackson show. I've got some tickets. You want to come? Yeah, and, uh, and his tickets turned out to to be VIP passes and everything so we could stand by the mixing desk. And uh, to my right was Paul. <laughs> so we're going, hey, nice, long time no see, you know. And uh, there was this nice brotherhood, familiarity, and uh, you know, which is like opposed to some bands where they give you shit in English. Um, you know, uh, there's this, feeling of rivalry uh, where, you know, if, if you're opening for somebody bigger where they want to dominate and, and uh, really give you the feeling that uh, 
you're not selling as many records as they are, you know. <laughs> there was nothing like that from Kiss, and and they are, you know, the mighty Kiss, you know. They right. can do, now, now they you, can you do what you, they like. <laughs> you as a solo artist, I think I just read, you're going to be on one of the shows with Kiss this summer in Europe. Yeah, on the 7th July with Kiss in the in the sacred rock temple of Switzerland in the Holland right. Stadium in uh, Zurich. So that was also like, oh, wow, once again, you know, I get, and this time I'm going to watch their whole show because I want to see them in the costumes again. You know, with us, yes. it was like <laughs> unmasked, animalized, and uh, I've, I'm looking into that, you know. When, when's, though, when's the last time you saw or spoke with Gene and Paul? Paul, ages. Probably ages. the Animalized Tour? I guess so, yeah. Maybe we met at some reception in New York, you know, these, these uh, things where you... Um, in New York, we used to meet so many people. Sure, sure. Um, but we were there like doing things with with the record company and uh, we used to go out for the night you know have a meal and then go to some club or whatever reception that was happening but uh, my memory fails me <laughs> a lot of times you know it's like this whole big omelette uh, or scrambled eggs if you like well, Mar Mar mark what do you do you have any recollections of the kiss audiences that you were playing for i mean there's there's been there's ah. been artists who have opened for kiss who are like man that the kiss crowd is a tough crowd they just want ah. kiss on stage and they don't care about an opener that's a good point well we felt that and you know we felt that at the beginning of a few concerts uh, but we managed to uh, crack the nuts you know because we're tough <laughs> in those days we just kept on hammering just keep on hammering and then you break well, well, you break them and and they suddenly realize hey we're we're not dealing with uh, an amateur band here you know these guys have road experience we used to feel like road warriors you know <laughs> and we, well, Mark, we went that's through that whole bit wanted... anyway with uh, with the headhunter tour the road warrior uh, so well, that's what I wanted to, to bring up because the first time I saw Crocus um, was opening for, I think, Def Leppard. Uh -huh. And I thought you guys destroyed them. And I, I was already a fan and that was the Headhunter tour. And I absolutely love that record. Um, so I, a couple of one of the how, yeah, that album's perfect. Uh, I, I think was, that album's produced so well, the guitar playing, just that. The, and, and also, too, I, I want to get a couple comments on that record. How did you get to do to uh, to work with uh, Rob Halford on? Uh, on well, we we had the key, you know, Tom Allen, the producer. No, that's right. He produced Judas Priest. Uh, and Lover Boy, I guess. Um, so, uh, no, no, Bruce Fairburn produced Love Lover Boy, not Lover Boy. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. But Judas Judas Priest was one of our um, uh, one of the bands we looked up to right from the very beginning. When I met the guys in Crocus, it was Judas Priest, ACDC. And uh, later on, even Saxon, when we met, we, when we saw them playing the first time. So Judas Priest, Tom Allen, their producer, and he, it was just, you know, hey, Rob, okay, I'll fly in. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, ready, and, ready to burn. The same, same thing with Jimmy Jameson, you know, he flew in and did some back backings on uh, Screaming in the Night on the ballad. And uh, with, with Rob, it was, are you ready? Ready to burn. Ready to burn. <laughs> ready to burn. Sorry. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and also, how did you guys bong? I, I love the, the, the BTO cover, the Stayed Awake All Night. Yeah. I, I thought that should have been a huge single. I don't, I don't know why. I don't think it was ever. That was never an actual single, was it? Well, that was not from Crocus, you know. That's a, a B BTO thing. That it was a single. It, I don't know if it's 
it's a uh, it's ever been a single but it's kind of too long to be a single although you could cut it up but um yeah i, I still i'm i'm even considering of putting that in my set you know because oh, stayed awake on like one of my favorite again that that record yeah. uh that, that record means a lot to me it was you know also too i mean that's really when you guys were really taking off um here in the states you know that and uh uh, one Vice at a Time, just another huge record over here. Another one that I absolutely love. Um, I, while I got you, because I, I love, you know, just, just being a fan and getting to, to speak to some of my, yes, exactly. Um, Mark, who wrote the lyrics to Mr. 69 and Smelly Nelly? Because those songs, I, <laughs> my friends and I just absolutely loved when we were kids. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming that came from your pen. Well, uh, the bass player had had an uncle living in in London, and he used to send him lyrics. And uh, that so we t we took the the thing out of the lyrics that made sense and um, and put them on songs, you know, and. Yeah, I mean, pretty extreme, especially Smelly <laughs> Nelly. <laughs> great tune, great tune. Again, you know, when you're when you're growing up, teenager and stuff, that's the stuff. My, you know, we we're like, oh my god. Because I, I got to admit, as I got old, I'm like, was there a language barrier there? Um, there but, was. Uh... <laughs> oh yes, there was, and and then what with the TV preachers, and. Uh, Oh, and, and we live in a conservative, well, it used to be even more conservative than it is today, Switzerland. And, uh, in, and then there's even uh, in, in, in Great Britain, you have this, this big uh, anti-sexist sexism <laughs> movement and all that. And I got told off. I, I got told off already because of the the line in heat strokes, uh, your pants are so tight, you know, <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, meaning, you know, pants, uh, because that's a, that's a Swiss German to English mistake, but I couldn't change that because, uh, because of the, the rhythm and stuff. So I thought, because I, I, in the beginning, I used to change a lot of the lyrics around and you give them proper English. If you find the words, with the same meaning, you know, but yeah. pants, they could be hot pants, you know. Yeah. Hey, another, of, um, another question like that. Um, I love the Heart Attack album. I thought that should have done a lot better than it did. It was really a nice return to yeah. form. I, I got to admit, I was one of those fans. I, I didn't, I didn't like the poppier crocus. It really disappointed okay. me. Oh, I'm sure you've fair. heard that a million times. It's I all a matter of taste. That's what I say, you know. Yes, yep. yes. But why and, did you guys uh, redo, uh, why did you do Winning Man? Why did you redo Winning Man? Which is one of my favorite songs. I was very happy to have it. <laughs> but uh, why yeah. did you do, uh, why did you redo that on, on, on uh, because cause we, it's not a single type song. We tried and couldn't write a better ballad <laughs> at that point in time, you know. Because it was like a, um, we started working on on Heart Attack in Solitern. It's the band's uh, city of birth. And um, we had pretty much everything ready and then uh, decided we want to go for a ballad as well. And we didn't have we didn't have a ballad that could match to to winning man and you know, so we rehashed that one. I, yeah, it's like, why not? You know, sometimes uh, bands do that, you know. Uh, I have a, a three-part question or two-part. Yeah. Okay. I'd love to know, how did you feel when you first came to play live in America, opening for wh whichever bands doesn't matter? What was it like? What was different than what you thought it would be? And what did you like best and what did you like least about the experience of being in America? Uh, when we first arrived, we, we, um, 
did some warm-ups in clubs and it was like, whoo, you know, uh, in those days, people still smoked in clubs and, and there were less restrictions about where to drink your alcohol and stuff. So, um, so it was pretty uh, chaotic and stinky and messy and, you know, but there was also no restrictions for uh, decibels in those days. So we played very loud and we kind of joined the party, you know, and, uh, and then suddenly we, we went on tour with Sammy Hagar and this was day and night, you know, very clean, very clean audience, all colorful, uh, three quarters female, uh, as opposed to in Europe where you have maybe a quarter female. So that was one thing we really loved. <laughs> <laughs> we felt like, like kids uh, set loose in a candy store when we came to the USA. And, and the freedoms, you know, the, the whole thing. We, we first started out in uh, California, West Coast. So the weather was like, oh, great, you know. And the pools, the whole attitude, you know, the, the whole the whole thing, you know. Uh, I start I got addicted to BLTs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <you know. laughs> That's not so, exactly what you want to hear from a rock star. Yeah, I got addicted to BLTs. <laughs> BLTs, yeah. <laughs> it's like being in a, it's like I, being in a Beach Boys I, song. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't stay a day without the BLT. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. No, it was great. I mean, and in those days, uh, we were young and frivolous and, and wild and, and crazy. And, you know, it was prob probably always hard work for our tour manager, L.D. Glover. And he did a great job. He really knew how to how to. He explained everything about the states, what not to do, what to do, and everything. And so the whole thing for us was really like, wow, this is the place to, to tour. Um, and uh, it became a reality because every tour got longer. And uh, we, we went from being a, a, a little fan, because whatever you are in Europe, you start again when you in the USA, you know, and we played in clubs and then we started opening. The first guy was uh, Sammy Hagar. He treated us, us really well. And uh, then it started, you know, more opening and then special guest, which is another level. You play a little longer and we could watch what the headline, what the headline acts do and, and suddenly, um, after the Def Leppard tour, the Pyromania tour, which was registered as the top tour of 1983, rock tour, uh, next to Michael Jackson, of course, with Def Leppard, um, it was like, hey, we, we can headline now. Whoa, okay. So we played headline the Long, Bre Long Beach Arena and, and other places. So this was like really wow, is this really happening, <laughs> you know, after such a, a short span of time? And, um, yeah, it, it was, you know, we, we made a lot of mistakes and uh, we made a lot of good things. And one thing for sure is we always worked our little hineys off, you know, that that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I remember, especially during the 80s, Crocus was one of those bands that was always on some tour bill coming through the States. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I remember it was always, well, it was, it was Saxon or Crocus was like always going to be on like a three band bill. One of those two yeah. bands was always opening, which I thought was great. No doubt. Yeah. So did we, we, we actually enjoyed being special guests most. <laughs> Because you don't have the responsibility, you know, the, the, fun, the huge financial risk. Um, you get paid well, you don't play so long, and, uh, and you get to get the girls before the headline. <laughs> 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 
Mark, 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 have you like now, you know, in the last 10, 20 years, have you looked back at some of those music videos you did in the 80s? I mean, yeah, like 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 screaming in the night. If you were there as a fan in the 80s, that's what music videos were like. That wasn't strange for the 80s. But no, now you no. look back at those videos and you go, good God, what were people, what were these video directors thinking? I mean, <laughs> you know, again, streaming in the night, the perfect video. I mean, you're just like, I, I don't know. I mean, have you have you ever looked back at those and kind of gone, man, oh, what, yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what were we doing? They, they were, I mean, those, those were screaming in the night, mostly, most of all, from all the rest, was a mini movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there were so many uh, uh, people working, you know, there was a whole dance troupe and there was uh, all these, these extras and even uh, some um, people from theater, from San Francisco and so on who joined the whole thing. And, and it was all organized by Joe Dea. I was still in touch with him. Now he's a painter. <laughs> and uh, he really got into it. And when, when we first met was in the Sir rehearsal studios in, in Los Angeles, close to uh, uh, that place where uh, they give the Oscars, I guess, mm -hmm. <laughs> at this big theater. Uh, anyway down the, that strip and, um, and and he said, well, Mark, you know, I hope you're not going to expect me to stick to the lyrics. You know, the storyline is going to be a little bit different, but uh, it's going to be good. And, you know, and I want to surprise you with stuff and, and we'll get you into some other clothes and stuff, all of us. And so it turned out in the end that, uh, it, it was like a mini road warrior yeah. you know, after the Holocaust or the whatever you call it, the atomic war. Um, yeah, kind of stuff, you know, which was very in, you know, was, was like very cool. <laughs> and in fact, we kept those uh, stage clothes until they fell to bits. <laughs> and we kept wearing them on stage on and off and patching them up and stitching this and that, and, you know, really uh, making do uh, with that image, you know, and um, it, it's nice actually to look back and, and there's a lot of nice memories. Did you guys, and, did you guys yeah, keep those fake, have, did you guys keep uh, those fake wooden guitars? <laughs> no. <laughs> Unfortunately <laughs> not, no. <laughs> but uh, they're easy to to uh, to make, you know. If you see <laughs> how it's it's all cheap stuff, really, which uh, on camera looks a little bit more cool than it really is, you know. And uh, yeah, no. And I wanted to say, yeah, yeah, we had big budgets in those days. Oh I God, mean, today, yes. Today is a different story, you know. You. <laughs> talking about oh god back, back back then you spent more money on one video than you spent recording your whole new album <laughs> <laughs> well M mtv was so important music television so uh, when we finally got videos on full rotation on music television we thought okay now it's gonna go into the double platinum uh, <laughs> zone you know but um, yeah, we, we, we got close with um, the Headhunter album and, uh, you know, we never expected to, to go so far, actually. You know, we just did what we, did, what we had to do and it happened automatically, if you like, you know. And you, we could have gone even further. Do you feel like all of that time you spent in clubs, moving your way up, opening for bands, and then becoming a headliner was critical to your success. The reason I ask that question is, is it seems like so many of these young bands now <clears throat> seem to blow past all of that, and all of a sudden yeah. they're in front of 12,000 people and they don't know how to entertain them. Well, exactly. You know, it's it's like, I, you know, if, if you want 
perfection, you know, I'm, I'm not a perfectionist, but some things, you know, I'm not well studied and, and we, we have time to study ourselves and be self-critical. And uh, we were very self-critical, actually. We stuck a camera on the mixing desk, we just a, fi a fixed one, and watched it. Every, every few nights, we'd watch ourselves performing and change this, that, the other, or even uh, songs on the set list, you know? and uh, maybe rearrange this, that, and the other in, in a song and stay creative because being on the road, you can become lethargic, you know, because it's, a, it's all this waiting, all riding the bus. And uh, even there, you have to stay creative when you're not relaxing, uh, you know, watching uh, movies and listening to records together as a band or in your bunk, you know, with uh, with your Walkman on. <laughs> Walkman? <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it was like uh, uh, very important, yeah, to, to do those steps and not suddenly be like a casting show where people are picked for their looks and, uh, and stuff and put together on a step. Age and actually, the, it, it's like papier mache. You know, it's like empty inside. You know, like a an Easter egg. Yeah. <laughs> you know, can you put your finger through it? You know, but uh, we 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 built up strength, not not just uh, st strength, stamina, and also in in the brain. You know, in the head. It's like to not to uh, give up because you go through so many hard hardships, you know, and uh, it toughens you up, you know, it makes you or breaks you. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. And Mark, how much, how much say did you have in the covers that you guys did? Because you guys did a fair amount of covers, I mean, yeah. one of which I really enjoyed your uh, Guess Who the uh, American woman version um, on one vice. I always loved. I got quite a bit of airplay here too. Um, uh -huh. After Headhunter, you, the, I think the next two records had lead singles that were both covers, Ballroom Blitz and Schools Out. Are those things the record company chose or did you guys choose those? Um, the first ever cover we did was American Woman. And the reason we took it was first of all, Fernando is a great uh, Randy Bachman fan because he says his riffs are like, you know, are like big, therefore stadiums, you know. Oh, I agree. I love him. Great fan. You know, yeah. And uh, so, and the next thing came, the next input came from our manager. He said, guys, uh, we're going to tour Canada, uh, so let's do Canadian content because Canadian content in Canada gets more airplay. It has to do with publishing and, and yep, that's true. copyright and stuff. So, so that was a great move because, um, you know, it, we got loads of airplay there and we, then we started to tour Canada regularly and, and then come back you know, go in one way, go across and come back down the other way, you know, <laughs> go in by New York and come out in Seattle. <laughs> so it was uh, a, a, a very intelligent thing. And then uh, the Blitz. Yeah, we did the, the Blitz. So, well, what's close to that? Bora Blitz. <laughs> a great song by Sweet, you know. And... Um, a very complicated and very challenging song and very, very dynamic, you know, goes from low to high and back to low and round about and all over the place. <laughs> and uh, for that one, we did a great video as well uh, in New York and uh, stay awake all night, right? Uh, school's mm -hmm. out, school's out, yeah. Oh, well, Alice Cooper, he writes great lyrics and there's some great songs. Uh, some old stuff, amazing. Um, schools out 
you know, it, it was like a, a change of address. So it was a double meaning thing as well. You know, we were breaking into uh, the world that you don't like, <laughs> you know, the pop world. Uh, kind of, uh, well, we thought, you know, we kind of go more towards the Def Leppard direction without sounding like Def Leppard, of course, you know. So it's there's a way, it's a means we started building double choruses in the songs consciously, you know, so you have the verse, the bridge and the chorus, and then another verse and then a, the bridge, which sounds like a chorus and then into the chorus and stuff like that. So, and then, then we cut down the uh, artillery <laughs> as well. So we had uh, less, um, aggressive sounding sound, you know. And um, yeah, it, it was it was uh, an experiment, very expensive, actually, experiment. That well, was, that's uh, how come I like Heart Attack so much, because it was really kind of a more headhunter, more one right. voice at a time vibe. And, and, and it, it, look, it wasn't just Crocus. That was, I mean, everyone from Sammy Hagar Girl School was a great example. They really, you know, kind of, Def Leppard, their sound too. Um, I know Saxon did the same thing on Innocence. It seemed like that mid '80s period. A lot you could tell it was. I mean, I always thought it was from the record companies because I, I just found it odd that all these great metal bands were now trying to make pop singles. Whereas, in, you Def know, Leppard was selling a lot of records. You're absolutely right. Absolutely. Yeah. That was my. That was my thing, though. Well they, said, well, they said, well, they said, you know, look at Def, take Def Leppard as an example. Uh, they have more female uh, fans and female fans buy more records. Mm -hmm. So, and thereafter figures, yeah. you know, you know, not necessarily uh, the culture behind what makes the figures. You know, it's just <laughs> ways and means of, of making more cash, you know, basically. So they kind of push artists into directions which could maybe produce more sales, which is, I guess, their job. But our job is, is uh, you know, to, to create, to stay loyal to ourselves, have fun doing it and um, you know in a way we we compromised you know um but it didn't work it didn't work so oh well mark mark, mark when, when when a band does something like that changes their style their sound their direction does that does that bring in conflict and turmoil within the band itself band members is that a tough situation to manage? It is. It is. And uh, it, uh, things can become quite funky <laughs> when, when stuff like that happens. Uh, and people leave or are told to leave. And um, the atmosphere gets uh, dampened and, you know, until the ball starts rolling again and, you know, you're back on stage and then the wounds heal and you move on, you know. But uh, f f at, the mo at that moment, you know, the decision-making is, is becomes quite traumatic and uh, uh, making, pe making people paranoid and stuff like that, you know. So it's, it's the part which isn't so nice um uh, you know on the other hand you you have to leave artists on their own you know and move move on we had the experience and uh, we knew we knew what we were doing so uh, there were mistakes done on both sides I, you know and there were some victims yeah 
Mark, let's let's talk talk a little bit about your new album. Um, what what have you got in planned out for for the new album for touring for supporting this? Um, what what's what's in front of you here? Well, this Friday we play our first warm up uh, in a club which is just over the hill here, close to my home and um, it's literally going to be a warm up uh, with um, a paying public and close friends and stuff and uh, it's going to be the first gig after uh, a few rehearsals um, and uh, well I, I I have a good feeling about it because uh, everything sounded so great during the rehearsals and we're going to rehearse during the sound check again and then do the gig and and then take notes and uh, film the whole whole thing and you know um but I'm starting off on on a on a it's like hey Storace is almost like an it it is a new band name i've been the singer of crocus for so long it's been my baby since uh, 1979 if you like but now that i'm doing a solo thing i regard this as a first uh, a rebirth and uh, i stand behind the songs i love the songs that are on the album uh, i had about 30 songs to choose from and that was uh, quite a task in itself and um, I love the musicians that played on it and uh, I also love the musicians that are going to tour with me and um, so I feel good about it and it's just a matter of uh, keeping the ball rolling and, and enjoying what I'm doing having fun and camaraderie and not nobody talks into it because I don't have a record company. Uh, it's just my manager and me, and uh, basically the band around me. Uh, there are two Crocus members, ex Crocus members, in the band now, and this bass player, a female bass player, Emmy, and she is really, she sets the the stage on fire the way she, you know. Roger Glover is is one of her idols, mm. and then there's this new discovery: this guitar player, uh, Turi. He's been mostly a session player. He's been in the business a long time, and and he really he rocks with feeling. You know, it's it's really nice stuff uh, which he does, and and uh, it's it's a great groove already, and and it it can only go uh, grow. You know. And it's fun. <laughs> and, you know, I said uh, it's going to be like clubs to start with and they get start getting bigger. And I play, the third one is in Solitern where uh, Crocus comes from. And um, then we're going to do uh, Rock the Ring with Alice Cooper, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, Yeah. It's a small world. <laughs> how, how how are you balancing the the set list between Crocus material and your your new solo material? Well, this is the way I went about it. Yeah, I see. I have I have only ten songs on the album, right? So ten songs do not uh, sum up to ninety minutes. So I thought, what shall I do? Okay, I'll give. A uh, history lesson <laughs> about uh, take stuff from my past, from my beginnings. I sang with a band called T, a progressive uh, rock music band. It was the first professional band I ever uh, sang in in Switzerland. It was the first band uh, in Switzerland at all for me. Coming from Malta, you know, the sunny little island in the blue Mediterranean. <laughs> so, uh, so I play a song from T. Then I went to London 
And I have this band called Easy Money. And we have one song out on a compilation album called Metal for Mothers 2. And this was right at the start of the new wave of British heavy metal. And uh, this, this song, Telephone Man, uh, which is about a hit man, you know, <laughs> uh, call me up. <laughs> um, so I, I've got this on, in the set, you know. And then obviously comes Crocus. But what am I going to play from Crocus without becoming a Crocus cover band, you know? So, okay, what does Crocus not play, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I first first choice was Midnight Maniac, you know, right back to the Kiss tour. <laughs> yeah. Hello, yeah. Kiss fans. <laughs> you have to come just to hear that song you heard when you when you attended the Kiss Animalized concert with Crocus as opening up. Okay, so Storace is playing Midnight Maniac now, and uh, then there's another song from uh, One Vice at a Time, right? Yep. To the Top. To the Top, love that song. Amazing, amazing song. And and we added a, a, a piece on the end where Turi, you know, or Art, short for Arthur, the lead guitar player, he adds a bit on, on the end, which is amazing with the band playing with him. And... Uh, so I can go off stage a little bit early and that's a pretty a, high vocal, Mark. You still hit me. Huh? That's what? a pretty high vocal in that song. Dude, that that's you still hitting that? <laughs> um, it's half half a tone lower. You know, at my age, at 70, you can lower things, you know. <laughs> 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 and uh, but but I'm still happy and I have to touch my wooden table now. <laughs> that I still have what I have at my age and uh, that I'm enjoying it, you know. Um, yeah, so so that's it. There's some some songs from my past and and uh, then we, we give a special Crocus Encore, uh, which is uh, a newer song, which is more popular in Europe than in the USA, I guess. It's, it's called Hoodoo Woman. Mm -hmm. Mama I was a yep. hoodoo woman. Papa was a hoodoo man. <laughs> Mama was a hoodoo woman. Papa. Are, are, are you are you hoping to bring uh, the the touring band to the U.S.? Well, yeah, that's that's one of my one of my biggest hopes, and we were trying to uh, organize. Because um, one of my oldest friends and first manager, who was the manager of T, Mr. Peter Valti, lives in Denver. And he was trying to organize a tour for Storace. And um, it, uh, it wasn't possible. The prices of fuel are up. There are nightliner yep. companies that went bankrupt and now the prices are like sky high it costs you you might as well hire a learjet you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and as i said i'm in i'm down here again as an opening act you know so i have to get on a package and stuff because storace uh, income is very low I, I you know i'm not selling uh, hundreds of thousands <laughs> I wish I was you know but um, the reviews are great and everybody who's done interviews with me they like the album like the songs and you know live and let live the the title track is is so it's great you know I mean you could have put that on headhunter with a with a Tom Allen sound you know and, and so on and so forth. This um, We're going to uh, do a new video uh, next Saturday. We're going to shoot a, a new video. And, you know, so I'm looking forward to things happening, you know. Yeah. 
Well, so, so, so Mark, before we, we wrap things up here, uh, where can people get the album? Is it available everywhere you would expect to find albums? iTunes, (laughs) Apple music, Amazon. Yeah. You can go everywhere you like. And, uh, if not, there's a, a www.indiemerchstore.com, and that's worldwide, <laughs> you know. Uh, if you go on my homepage, www.storache.ch, sorry, <laughs> I, I get mixed up myself, ch, not .com, because that means Confederation Helvetique. Helvetia is Switzerland in Latin. So, yeah, you go there and uh, you, you're guided to where you can order the album and you can, you can have a sneak peek, you know, short, short streamers. And um, I'm sure you're going to like it because uh, I didn't drift too far away from uh, what I normally do. Yeah. You know, um, I didn't want to because I am what I am, you know. Uh, Right. And that's and that's it. I didn't go looking for a new wheel. They're all round. <laughs> <laughs> that's, smart. that's a great line. I that's like smart. That. <laughs> well, Mark, I, th- this has been uh, a great pleasure. I mean, you're I mean, you're a legend, you know, Crocus oh. legend. Can't tell you how many Thanks. times we've we've seen Crocus and you in concert over the years and Mark himself is a huge fanboy of Crocus. So we appreciate you taking the time out of your evening because you're over in Switzerland right yes. now. So it's like nine o'clock at night um, for sharing yeah, a few yeah. kiss stories, some memories and, and talking Crocus in your new album. It means a lot to us. Thank you very much. It, it, it was a pleasure being on your show and um yeah, I hope I can make it to the USA with uh, Storace. And, uh, well, enjoy whatever we do while we're doing it until dreams come true, right? There you go. <laughs> and, and, awesome. and, and say hi to Gene and Paul when you when you're share the bill with them. Definitely. Uh, um, we're going to take uh, a new picture with them. There you it's go. Send it, send it over when you a, get a new picture. We'll post about it. About time for an update. Yeah, I'll yeah say exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, again, cool. Mark, thank you so much. This this was, was a great honor. Like I said, you're a legend. You're a legend thank without you, question. Guys. Thanks a lot. Yeah, big thrill. Great, great talk. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. We appreciate your time. All the best. All the best to you. So, Lisa. Hello. What do you think of that interview with Mark? Outstanding. <laughs> Would you give it a? Well, what was what was give your a... fa- what what was your favorite part of the interview? Everything. <laughs> yeah, but there was was there one specific question he answered that you're like, wow, I didn't know that. You know, it was interesting was, uh, how he you're... pronounced his name properly. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I thought she, I thought it she was got her, she got out of the box. She got out. She did. <laughs> like uh-huh. a mom, she's got an answer for everything. Boom. Boom. I thought it was the double decker tour story that you were uh the upper <laughs> the upper decker tour story. <laughs> Don't make me laugh again. Stop. The double upper. Jeez. <laughs> oh my God help us. Um that no, that was that was a fun interview. Um I don't know why. I just found it interesting that Paul, his preparations for singing were just gargling with whatever soda he could find. Got to make it work. Whatever works for you, works for you. But, uh, and you know what, Mark, hats off to you. You didn't go off the rails, fanboy, like you did with Gil. Oh, Gil was a Gil... It was a, a lot more fanboy-ish. I, again, a huge Crocus fan. Much It, it was funny because there really was similarities between Gil and, and Mark. And that way is that when I first discovered Triumph, I thought Rock and Roll Machine was a first record. You know, I was a kid. I didn't know. But it was the same thing. 
when um, Metal Rendezvous came out, I thought that was their first album. Now, in a way it was because it was the first record to be released in the United States. So I, plus it was the first record that he sang on. So I didn't, you know, I, didn't, I wasn't even aware of the name Crocus until 1980. And one thing I thought was funny because I've even talked to some of my local Detroit here, friends here. They remember the title Swiss Kiss too. You know, it's something that we've talked about. And I want to say I saw that in print, maybe in Cream Magazine, where they referred to them, which would make sense because that was based in Detroit. But, you know, the whole Swiss kiss thing, it was funny because even at the time when I was a kid, you know, I was 15 in 1980, I remember like, well, they don't sound like kiss. I kind of get it where they, you know, they're a hard rock band, but I'm like, these guys kind of sound like ACDC. And keep in mind, by the time Heat Strokes came out on Metal Rendezvous, like Highway to Hell was already huge. You know, you could really go, you know, that sounds like, ACDC but uh yeah great stuff great band looking forward to hearing his uh his solo material and uh you know just looking forward to more Starachi in my life. I have a story but nobody cares I danced to Midnight Maniac uh for my in your early eighth, career in my oh. for my eighth grade <laughs> really we're gonna go there <laughs> I'm sorry. What, what are you? Are you shocked we went? No, there? I'm not. No, I'm not. After anyway, what we went through earlier, I was anticipating what you were saying. I was anticipating what you're going to say. I danced to Midnight Maniac on my eighth grade, like little uh, baton thing, like a little recital thing. So I did a baton routine to Midnight Maniac, and I still remember it. Would you <laughs> dance to it again if somebody paid on Cameo? Yeah, I mean, I would do a, I would do my baton routine, yeah, because I still remember it. Hundred percent, okay. I remember it. All right, there you go. Somebody out there who wants to see this, book it on Cameo. Say you want Lisa to fifty do year old lady wants to do it. You want to see her do her baton routine to Crocus in a cheerleader outfit. Oh, come on, let's not go. Let's not go crazy now, okay? Let's just keep it. You know. No, I'm with Tom. I'm with Tom school yeah. girl outfit. Team Tommy on this one. Yeah. Team Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no Team Tommy. <laughs> hey, if somebody pays on Cameo, you have to. Yeah. Okay. If they request I'm not doing it in an outfit. This is for if, they, if, if, if they, if well, they can, pay you, five you bucks on Cameo and request a costume, you've got to do it. She, no, well, she doesn't have to wear anything. Week. No, let's not. Yeah, that's open for a lot of issues. She doesn't have to worry. Are we segueing into OnlyFans? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, um, go check out Storacci. Spelt like his name. It's good mm -hmm. stuff. It's not that far off from Crocus. And uh, if you're over in Europe, check him out on tour. He's gonna, as he mentioned, he's got a show with with Kiss. Uh, homework. Uh, Ooh, crocus shit. albums. What's your favorite Crocus album? Did, did you, you see them on tour with? Yeah, did you see them? Yeah. What do you What do you think of the Crocus music videos? Now they're That's not any worse than a lot of other bands at that time. But time back at them right now. It's a time capsule. It's a time capsule. It really is. I love the fact that the band was playing to wooden guitars, air guitaring. Mm-hmm. I love that. It's funny too because, like, "Eat the Rich" is such a great song, and that video is just like, other than a great video. <laughs> but again, that's what a lot of metal videos were like back then. Well, I tell you, you know who really? Matter of fact, I'm. And by the way, Adrian, thank you. Still wearing it with pride. Um, boy, Saxon had some horrible videos, and the music was so great. The videos. They were a totally radio faced band. I mean, yep. Well, I mean, just ass kicking great. I love Saxon, but goddamn, damn. Like, like, like a Raya Heap. There was a band. Remember, we talked about those guys. Oh, it's like, right. Great, that's great right. music, but boy, don't put them on camera. But yeah, the way that it is. What a great song. That Bominage is such a great album. And then that video, you're like, oh boy, oh boy. Yeah, um, not good. Not good. But, uh, 
Um, all right. So you know what to do with your homework. Leave your answers somewhere, anywhere. Uh, next week, we've got a returning guest next week. One of Tommy's buddies, all of our buddies. Bren's coming back. Talk about a new flip album. Bren share some kiss trailing. stories. Yeah. Hoping for fun. another for another Juicy Lucy with Tommy. That was fun. We, we oh, do that probably do. once. We do that maybe every two months we go and have one. What's a Juicy Lucy? Is I don't even... Should I Google this one too? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's the cousin of the Upper Decker. Do I need to Google this? <laughs> no, it's there's a place in Minneapolis <laughs> called Matt's Bar and Grill. It's been there since... God, the early 50s. And I love Lisa. Exactly she doesn't trust us anymore. No, I don't. She? I don't trust anything. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know what a Juicy Lucy is, is it's a basically a double cheeseburger with the cheese oh, inside. I did Goosey Lucy. <laughs> Goosey, actually, I'm totally we good. don't know. We can't, ve- we can't vouch for what you see when you Google that. No. So I took Lisa's Martin. on Pornhub pulling stuff up. <laughs> yeah. Up the yeah. Block. Are you said you're exactly. in, in New York, Tommy? No, in Minneapolis. Min- so Minneapolis. So when, when Mark was here last two years ago we, for the kiss we show, we closed the place. <laughs> I knew oh, it's love cheese it. inside the meat. Yes. Oh. <laughs> That's delicious. Yes. Right. And you yeah. just picture Mark sitting there going. Oh, I, oh and the yeah. Fri- those fries were fantastic. It that's was a great delicious. Day. Oh my! And that's all they serve there is basically juicy Lucy's. That's that's literally all that's on the menu now, and, now, and beer, and that's about it. Lisa, it is known that a juicy Lucy will lead to an upper decker. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, nice. Now, see, now you're getting you confused with White Castle. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. White Castle. Oh Taco my God! This, this 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 episode. I don't know if we went off the rails or what, but we didn't have any intentions after with what 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 happened with Lisa here this week. Oh my! Oh, Jesus. that was that was cameo stuff. That was cameo. Oh but we my. mentioned it at the beginning of the show, and we're going to see if we can post that cameo because that's yeah. just <laughs> you were on you were on the phone with Adam and Eve about your order. Uh, that's yeah, it was oh, we're, do, we're doing the end of the show now, Mark. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're Mark all discombobulated. Yeah, Mark can't keep up because we're doing everything back ass words. Yeah. He's just upset that the kiss ball gag isn't in. I'll get one. Um, all right, everybody. That's it. Three sides of the coin. We're out of here. We'll see you next week. You love the show. Visit three sides of the coin.com. Subscribe on YouTube. Follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. Voices for Three Sides of the Coin, provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.